The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Sometimes you can grow up in a home and it's truly home. But most of the kids now are coming up from a broken home. And so other people have stepped in to establish what home is for them. It's important that all of us speak truth to our children. Not compromise the truth for their sakes, but speak truth to our children no matter what. Because a crucial and critical time is coming. And when things begin to go sour in the world, if you spoke truth to that child, they will recall it and remember. And when they do, it could be an opening to salvation for them. But please understand the type of world they're going to grow up in. It's not like the world we grew up in. Because kids today are being taught to do everything that is an abomination to the living God. And they will accept it. Many children right now don't see the need of a deity. Because many children are science oriented. In other words, they look at videos. They look at all these different people making the same comments over and over again. Talking about tech. Technology has taken on a life of its own. It's kind of like a, a computer system. You can turn a computer system on and it can manage do your HR, for example, human resources, and it takes care of your employees. Someone interested in data, this, that, and the other. Well, guess what happens when that person who ran, who was a director at human resources, what happens when that person is no longer with you? Another person shows up and they step in doing exactly what the computer demands. So the computer itself is going to have servants to execute exactly what it contains. Isn't that a strange thought? There are many things in this world that have a type of life like that. Whether a person agrees with it or not, people will conform to it. And if people go missing, it will simply fill itself with more people. So it survives outside of us, is what I'm saying. In this entire system we have built, survives outside of us. You simply replace that person by training up another person to take its place. That is a doozy. It's very difficult to fight with, especially things that are immoral right now. Which, by the way, makes the word of God just something we can't live without. But if we don't have that word in God's context, and when I say God's context, here's what I mean. We can come up with a thousand reasons and a thousand different beliefs by ourselves. But there's only one truth. And we have to actually study to show ourselves approved, to be partakers of that truth. Or not to remain ignorant of the truth. We know this by the comments of Christ. Folks, these days are changing. And all these indications in weather, all the indications within mankind are changing. And what's building up in mankind is resistance to faith-based things connected to Christ. Directly is so direct right now, it's not even funny. Because every abomination that was mentioned in the Old Testament, people practice right now with impunity. They're not resisted. They are embraced. People won't uh, eventually wake up and say, oh, we're doing the wrong thing. That's not what's going to happen. They're going to get worse and worse and worse. Which is why in Revelation I said the world worshipped the dragon. Now that's very disturbing. Because the world worshipped the dragon. What, what do you mean the world? The world contains when it's speaking in that context, it's talking about humanity worships the dragon. You may ask, how so? If I were to defend the maker of a Black Hawk helicopter, and everybody else thought it was a waste of money and everything else, but I defended that Black Hawk helicopter, where is my heart? Doesn't it convey what I'm actually connected with? And just to make this a little easier to understand, Imagine a person who is shown the truth about when they're going to die. What if the Lord showed you when you were going to die? You see when you're going to die. And so you start living life the way you want to because of your mind. You say, well, I got time. We always do this. I got time. I got time. And so we wait until the last minute. And that last minute, a person would straighten up, wouldn't they? At the very end of their lives, they would start to straighten up to get their lives right. But prior to that time, they would live it up. They say, I have time to change anytime I want. They would live like hell on earth, much like they're doing now. Well, it's ironic that a lot of people say, hey, we still got time. Even Jesus said this. He said that. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord, delay this coming and begin to smite his fellow servant. He called him an evil servant, still a servant, but an evil servant. And he smites his fellow servants. Isn't that what happened 
goals. When you think you have time left, or when I think I have time left, we end up relaxing, throwing caution to the wind. No sense of urgency. Sin multiplies within us. It does. If we can remember that, we ourselves won't slip in these detrimental times. Because if we don't slip, we stay in this solid fashion for children, offering a better hope for kids. We don't know what spirit is in these kids. I don't know what spirit's in them all the time, nor does anybody else. You don't know what they really are. But if they were full of the fallen, would you excuse their wrongdoing? If you knew a perfect child was occupied by seven demons, would you just shrug off the abominations they commit? Or would you, by way of scripture, begin to explain to that child about creation, why they're here, no longer allowing the world to define to them how they're here, because that's truly what's happened. The world's defining why they're here. When's the last time you heard a Christian define to anybody, by way of the word of God, why we're here in the first place? You don't hear that too much. We discuss every issue around it, but we offer no purpose for a person's life because even in a Christian's life, when I was a young Christian, I used to hear this all the time, get saved and, go, and everything will be all right. And I really believe that. Physically, I believe that physically my situation would turn around, everything be all right, but that's not the truth. When you're saved, it's because you were marked. Your decision to say yes is simply responding to a call that's already gone out. So that means you are the called or you would not be saved at all. If you're preserved like that, what you do is important around those kids. But I fear that right now things have many of the Christians are saying within themselves, what's the use of not standing in a full capacity? Just like yesterday's conversation, uh, yesterday we were talking about depopulation. I said, well, why would Satan or anybody want to start killing off people on the earth? Look at the dark side of it. And I know you don't contemplate the dark side of things, but that's good. Have you ever noticed that Satan does not want his hands dirty? He does not want to be blamed for your decisions. He doesn't. But he will influence and show you things. And if you believe it, you'll act on it. And before you know it, you're doing the bidding of darkness and not the bidding of light. I believe Satan knows that the timing that we're in, what's coming. And if we don't stand spiritually every day, because it takes every day, children are going to suffer more and more. I personally believe that we're the ones responsible for no kids being on the earth in those dreams. I, I strongly believe that because we stopped caring. We were so self-consumed, we couldn't see outside of ourselves. Thus, we forgot about the other children. People had become so offended, you can't say anything now, the kids. I remember when Jesus said that offenses would come. You remember that? He gave us a warning that offenses would come. A warning that people are offended. If you were to say something to their child, they would say, don't judge my child. You can't say this, you can't say that. Because they protect their children, regardless of what they do. And they justify the rebellion within a child, saying it's okay, when in truth, it is not. I really do uh, hope you guys can partly understand what I'm saying. Because a storm is coming. And before that storm reaches, well, we don't know what that storm will do. We do know it's going to leave a lot of carnage in its path. But prior to its coming, the escorts will come with it. The storm is destruction. The escorts, spirits of darkness. Spirits of darkness that will cause you to fight against one another. Satan does not want to get his hands dirty. So for a long time, it's been influencing people to turn against one another. Specifically you. You're the main target. Not the sinners. You are. The ones who believe. The ones who will not be moved. You're those people. Consideration. Because something happened to the kids. And we know that if something happens to children, right before the storm does hit, how many will be distraught and lifeless, hopeless? Because if the kids, if something happens to the kids, and you begin to witness things happen to children, in the minds of so many, they'll say, well, nothing can happen to a child, because God will directly protect them. But if people start, if they believe that, they start saying something happened to children, they're going to be depressed, hopeless, They'll stop working. They'll stop caring. Some people are alive because of their children. If we didn't have children, not one of us would be an adult. We would be empty. Many would be empty. And you don't want to go through that sorrow. Nothing but sorrow. Outside of that conversation, this is an era of opportunity. Right before everybody is awakened. But your armor can't be dull. Your armor is going to have to be very sharp. 
I mean the edge of your armor. Very sharp. Sharp to deter, to keep away. We can't have false armor. can have armor that we just, you know, kind of claim. Because the armor of God does not come when a person says, okay, I'm going to wear that shield of faith. That's not wearing the armor. That's saying you're wearing armor, but you don't have the armor. To have that armor is to walk by faith. Then you have that armor. Not shoes that are swift to shed innocent blood, but to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. A person can claim that all day and tell you what footwear they're wearing, but if they're not walking in the ways of the Lord to spread the gospel, well, they have the wrong footwear on. The helmet of salvation, we can claim that all day. But if we mope around all the time saying, well, I wonder if I'm, I'm going to be with God or not. See, because when we say things like that, listen, if I were to tell you guys, I'm, I wonder if the Lord's going to save me or not. If I ever say that, you know what that really means? That means I'm not doing everything I can do. That means I'm aware of things that are undone and I'm just too stubborn to do them. How can I don the helmet of salvation when I refuse to conform to obedience? And that is to say, fully adopt obedience into your life. To accept the lot God gave you in life. To see His holy hand maneuvering things in your life. There are so many more things I want to bring up. See, they have certain laws passing. It's going to take care of the population boom with all the rearrangements of crops. It will affect the population boom as we continue to be exposed to radiation. It's going to alter the population boom. It's inevitable. But your role in this time is key. My question is, is it serious? Because during this time, you're a co-laborer. You've entered into other men's labors. You didn't establish the labor that you're in. I didn't either, but we're co-laborers. We've entered into other men's labor. We're standing on top of foundations others have made before us. What will you do with it during this time? Because I hope you understand a storm is really coming. Even if you don't call it a storm, you can call it whatever you will. But something is coming that's not favorable to life on this earth. But hear me on this. There's a reason you're here. There's a reason you're still alive. There's still folks around you who watch you, accuse you, and watch you some more. What are you demonstrating to them? Christ or not Christ? This is what I want you guys to ponder if you could. No longer can you afford to say, oh, that good person died. Don't say that. If a person is truly in the realm of righteousness, their soul is intact and they are okay. It's a tragedy when somebody dies without Christ. It is not a tragedy when somebody passes this earth and they truly are saved by the blood of the Lamb. I say that because we'll entertain death in this world quite a bit. But we are the ones of whom God built full of light, His light. And all we have to do is be true to that light, be upfront with that to continually choose it, that light, not to make up our own paradigm of life, and not to be given over to much of the propaganda that floats around, but to be vessels of light. Because if you are a vessel of light, you will affect everyone around you. In some way, form, or fashion, they will change because of you. You know, in this day and age, we got to be very careful to maintain faith for the right reason. Not to be seen of people as as some extraordinary individual. No, it's also important that you guys that you get used to supernatural things. How many of you are used to supernatural things? They're common in your everyday life. In truth, they should be common to all of us. It shouldn't be supernatural to us. It should be natural. It should only be supernatural to the world, not to us. It should be common to us. And we're quickly approaching those days. But a darkness is rising also. When the storm reaches us, everything of darkness is going to be touched. It won't be able to hide. The storm itself is destructive in its nature. Darkness will stand up. Darkness will be seen. When those things, uh, when they take place, that darkness comes. Confusion comes with it. It comes with it. But there's still time for us. Still time to get serious about the Word of God. Still time to influence others by way of righteousness. Meaning, still time to represent the kingdom of God. Is Jesus would have us represent the kingdom of God. That's very important. Your governments are going to change. An agreement's coming up in about a week. I already know that people are going to uh, really lose it over this agreement. None of you should lose it over any agreement 
that they make. Because we have government too. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we have. That's our government in the kingdom of the living God. We're in this earth, not of this earth. That does not mean you're an alien. That means you're in this world, but not of this world, which means your practices are of a higher standard. Now is the time to really reach, truly strive, because the supernatural things are coming back, both light and darkness. All things are already coming back. People are already paying a price. Be aware. Point by the way, my personal belief is the water event is soon to take place. Of course, God's in control of all things, right? I believe that you're going to find more and more people just simply don't care. They're going to say they, they're going to get burned out on prophecy. I hope that none of you will, but many people will. Not even knowing that Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy is, prophecy is not fortune telling. Prophecy is God telling us what he decreed, what he will do. To a believer, prophecy is beautiful. To an unbeliever, prophecy is a threat. To the disobedient, prophecy is correction. To that thief, prophecy is a jail sentence. Now, I don't know about you, there have been a lot of people who have come before me. But lots of people have come after me. I'm never in a rush to claim I'm something that is significant in the Word of God. To be open with you guys, I simply want to be pleasing unto the Lord because He is the only one who died for all the rotten things I did. He washed me. I'm fully adopted. So I'm not quick to claim some extraordinary title in the Word of God in view of men. Because if God gave, if God made me an extraordinary person, the last thing I would do is tell the world I'm, I'm one of these extraordinary people because that's marketing. I'm not going to do that. Because in the Bible it says if people are your witness, you can't be a witness unto yourself. Other people have to be a witness to your life. I can't sit here and tell you I'm a good guy. Other people have to tell you that. I can't tell you that. I can't be a witness to myself like that. It didn't work that way. That's why Jesus said, the Father testifies of him. That's why Jesus said that. But you got a lot of people going around. And they do. They go around. there. It's, it's almost like there's a part of vanity within us. And we want ourselves to look good. We want to be blameless and spotless in view of others. I'm just a sinner saved by grace who happens to believe in Christ Jesus wholeheartedly, who I fully agree with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I agree that my enemy should be forgiven of all things. I do not agree that my enemy should be punished, because I was an enemy once. To agree that my enemy should be punished is to agree that I should have no blessing but should be punished. Can you see how anything we pass on another person, we're actually speaking to ourselves. The same one we point a finger at were we not that same thing not too long ago. So how in the world can I condemn that guy when I was that guy a long time ago? I'm thankful that God did not condemn me, but that he brought me into the marvelous light. Now why would I go around condemning anybody else? Wouldn't I hope that they would be brought to the marvelous light? You better believe it. It's time to make some distinctions, to be very real about our faith. Let our motivations be pure and established in the Lord. It really is time, and I hope that all of us can encourage each other to continue to do that based on the words of Jesus of Nazareth, our Savior. Never be afraid because you didn't hear something here at COT or hear something from me. Listen to me carefully on this. When it comes to your soul, your Father in Heaven is not playing games. And if you require something for your soul, for your walk here on this earth, your Father in heaven will not withhold it from you. Keep your ears tuned to the Lord's word. You will not come up short. You'll finish the work he began in you. So don't ever say to yourselves, I think this is going nowhere. You won't finish the work. He will. Please remember that. You're in good hands, capable hands. Hands that Satan cannot break loose. The grip of love upon you cannot be broken loose by anything in the heavens or in the earth. God himself must decide to let go. And he already said he's not going to do that. In fact, he said he's not going to do that so much that he set up revelation in the judgment to come in a certain way that he never has to stop loving anybody, but that they are decreed to be divided. God's love is endless. His mercy is endless. His grace is surely sufficient. What he's given us today is enough. So when all these trials come to the earth, he already gave us the biggest hint of all. The biggest piece of advice he has already given us, and it is this. 
come out of her, my children. Be not partakers of her sins, that you don't partake of her plagues. To come out of a place is to get out of the mindset of that place, out of the sinful ways of that place, to be established in the gospel everywhere you go. My goodness, we're in delicate days. We have to tread carefully in these days. Consider all things. Most importantly, remember what Christ said. He's the author and finisher of your faith. He said that all who have come to him, the Father hath given him, and he will in no wise lose, and he will raise up in the last day. That's what he said. All that come to him, God hath given him. That means if you truly believe in Jesus, because those who truly believe will not turn their backs on the cross. Those who truly believe will not condemn their fellow man. Those who truly believe, they believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ is to believe that your enemy should be forgiven. Uh-oh. To believe your enemy should be forgiven. If you cannot believe or, or agree that your enemy should be forgiven. Guys, I explained about Revelation. If somebody believes in God's word and they believe in Revelation in a certain way and they don't prepare themselves for Revelation, then they never believed in the first place. So if a person believes a dream is from the Most High, and that person does not act on that dream that they didn't believe it in the first place. Because the things we believe, we act on, don't we? We do. If you believed that you were about to, you know, get some sort of a settlement or something like that, you would prepare to receive that settlement. If you don't believe you're going to receive anything, you're not going to prepare for it. So your preparations really determine your faith level. If you pray for something, Suppose one of you prayed for healing. You said, Lord, I want to be healed. But you do nothing after your prayer. How then are you? What is, you're not acting on it. When you pray for something, never hesitate to prepare for it. Yes, it sounds radical, but it's also faith. And faith should not be radical to any of us. Remember that. When you believe in something, then believe in it. Because when you faith without works is dead, those works really determine if you believed or not. These are the days of the internet. We can say anything, can't we? Our lives, the way we walk, those closest to us, those that deal with us on a day-to-day -day basis, those are the ones that can tell exactly who we are. Please remember that. Be as authentic as you can. And don't do it by my definition. Do it by what the Lord has given you. Always be true to what the Lord has given you, to the best of your ability. When things are bound in righteousness, they will complement one another. And the more you do that, the less you're going to fight against each other. Because again, Satan desires. Do you really think that uh, in this depopulation thing? First of all, Satan wants you guys to turn against Christ. And Satan's not going to get his hands dirty. He's going to make you do it. He's going to make you destroy your neighbor. And that's how he works. He himself is not doing a thing, but that he works through people to have them through it. He's already corrupted. He wants you to also be corrupted. That's why obedience is so important, because when you're not obedient, you often find yourself working the corrupted things of Satan himself. I don't know about you, but I have a desire to be obedient. I don't wrestle with obedience. I have a strong desire to obey. I have a strong desire to obey, because I'm a person who knows what authority is. I know what authority is, and I know what authority appointed over me is. But I can carry out orders, but also understand the weight of giving orders and the consequences of not following orders. I know all of those very well. So authority is nothing new to me. It is a way that we can honor the Most High. I can't do anything for Christ, can you? I, I really can't. What can I offer Christ? Nothing. But I can be obedient. I can demonstrate that I'm fully accepting of a sacrifice by my obedience, especially in times when it does not benefit me, especially in times when it takes from me and gives nothing in return. Those are the most precious times to obey, when it costs you something, because then it's real. Think about giving a gift to someone. Many people in this day and age, they give a person a gift of something that they don't want anymore. I'll do the opposite. I try to give gifts in this way. I always give people something I can't do without. That's a gift. See, if I don't love it anymore, how can, how, how can I expect somebody else? How can that be a gift I'm giving to somebody else? That doesn't work for me. 
But if I don't want to part from something, if I like it that much, then that's a good gift for someone. That's a real gift. Otherwise, it's just trash. God doesn't give us trashy gifts, does he? I'm not going to do it either. See how the Lord teaches. If we look at his walk, he teaches all the time. He has taught us so much if we just examine. Because if you think about it, what can we offer Christ? But what we can do is take everything about ourselves and apply every single last crumb of it and direct that toward the Lord, giving it for his cause. When you love another person, love them as though you would love the Lord. When you do something for somebody else, that's how you do for Christ. Your fellow man is a recipient of whatever you do for Christ. You want to love the Lord, then love your fellow man. You want to honor the Lord, then honor your fellow man. And do it wholeheartedly, expecting nothing in return. Not based on any bias that you may have. It's not based on, because I do good to my enemies always. And I'll always do that because I don't have enemies. Somebody may call me an enemy. I will not call somebody else an enemy. My spiritual maturity is when you stop seeing enemies. You see God's creation. You see some of God's creation corrupted and some uncorrupted. But it's still God's creation. Even Satan is God's creation. The demonic entities could not exist. That's God's creation. Everything is God's creation. I don't love demons. I don't love the devil. I have nothing to say about Satan. Because I have no fellowship with him. He does what he does. I'm going to do what the Lord instructed me to do. I stand against everything he stands for. He likely does the same to me. And to you too. But I'm not one of those who sit there and have a, a word war with him. He's been here for a long time. And the Lord said, don't do that. The Lord said, resist him and he will flee from you. The Lord never said to entertain him and he'll flee from you. He said, resist him. I don't want to waste my time on Satan. Every minute I waste engaging with Satan, I'm ignoring somebody who really needs something. That's why I never entertain anger. That's why I have peace in my dwelling. Why? Because anger is something that Satan often motivates. It's a part of him. I'm not going to invite any part of him into my dwelling and waste my time on that. Because I remember the nights when I used to call out for help in my own head. I remember a multitude of situations where no one came. I was hoping just one person would come and no one came. Because people get preoccupied. And guess what? I'm not going to be so preoccupied. But I'll just overlook things. I don't want to be caught where I'm not paying attention and somebody slips through the cracks. Because that happens every second of every day. I want to pay attention. Because I know what it is to cry out for help and receive none. I know what it is to wish that you had support, but you have none. See, I know what that is. That's why I was in those positions. It boosted my compassion upon those who are thrown away of the world, who are cast aside, the people the world looks over, who are judged, ridiculed. I have a heart for those folks. Even for the ones out there that are drunk right now, I have a heart for them too. For the ones that are on drugs, for the ones who have a foul mouth right now, I have a heart for them too. For those who are in sin, I have a heart for them. Because I don't agree with Satan. Satan points at them and says, I got them and they lost. I don't agree with that. Do you? I'll never look at a sinner and say he lost. He's condemned. He's kaput. That's what Satan says. That's not what the Lord says. I'm not going to agree with him. I'll resist everything he says and hope to fully adopt all the principles of Christ. So that person I was missing in my youth, I can show up. Isn't it funny how the very person you were looking for in your own youth, you have become? The question is, will you show up or not? Somebody's crying just like you were. You wanted someone for comfort, for encouragement. They didn't come, but you have become that very person. Now, what will you do? See, you have a choice now. And I hope that you choose this day to serve the Lord. You can serve yourself or serve something else, or you can serve the Lord. My prayer is that you serve the Lord. My prayer is that you show up for yourself. Those sinners out there in the world are you in the past. Would you ignore yourself when you were in sin crying out for help? What if Christ was in the world crying out for help? Would you ignore him? Because he did say, what you have done to the least of these you have done unto me. He also said, what you have not done for the least of these you have not done for me. Surrender to everyone as though you would render unto the Lord. Do good to all men peacefully with all men as it is possible. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. 
covetous, most proud, blasphemy. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.